leader is one who is always looking to pass on the baton. We die. So if today we die, if my by my ability to have identified and impacted in others the leadership that I have been given by God. So leadership is much more than overseeing an organization, a church, or a business. In many ways, leadership, or the best leadership, is one which is focused on leading a legacy. So if today the ministry that you and I are holding in various places we are living, if God wants us home today, what will be said of you and I? That is the nature of the great of your leader. Leadership is about impact. Leadership is about influencing others and bringing about the desired impact. The desired impact is that which we are given. The great commission is that you and I have to make the And, the Holy Spirit. and then, once we baptize these leaders, once we, we make them disciples of men, we have to grow them. We are supposed to teach them the ways of the Lord. We are supposed to teach them how to live in this kingdom. It's not it's not enough for us to call people into the kingdom without equipping them. So, there are various examples in the Bible of what the leaders of the Bible uh, did in terms of living a legacy. We look at the ministry of Elijah. Elijah means continue. Elijah means we did not go in. We can't say Elijah died. Elijah did not die. He was caught up in the heaven. But it didn't go with him. It continued after his death through Elijah. Paul's ministry continued after his death through Timothy. Who have you impacted enough for it to continue living even after you have done So we need to identify leaders. And this is an emergency leader. I'm talking to you as leaders because you lead children. You lead others. You lead at home. But it's an emergency for you and I to identify leaders and ensure that we start to live through these people that we would want but what God has placed in our heart. We need to find someone who can join with us to be able to foster that which is uh, placed in our heart as ministry. So how do you identify these leaders? How do you uh, look out for them? The book of Acts, it contains the book of Acts, chapter number 15, verse 1 to 8, but maybe because of time, we will not read, but you can send there and see. Um, this this passage of scripture tells you and I that we need to be intentional. We need to be intentional. We need to seek out the right people. Acts 16, 1 to 3. And then, when we are intentional, we must make sure that we are leading a team. It shouldn't be just you and everything is around and start and stop with you. We must be the team and be on the lookout to be on a team. We must be there. Jesus did not come on this earth to conclude.
clothes that my dad that was given by God alone. He looked for 12 like minded people who he instilled, who he empowered, and who he made sure that even after he left the ministry of the his leadership continued through each one of them. And look at the differences in the apostles. Each one of them had a trait that he picked up from Jesus and carried on there. Not not any one of them was alike in ministry. Not any one of them did the same thing. Everyone had their own mandate, but drawing from the one spirit. And so to get others in the team, you you can look at delegating. Look at delegating and selecting others to help. The process of giving of 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 of, of making uh, people become part of the team is tedious. It is not easy to get people to come into one space. It's not easy for everybody to catch on and be able to, to get um, a view of what to do about a particular ideology or ministry. It, is, it takes time for ministry to be built into another being. It takes time for someone to understand your vision. At 6 and 3 says, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost, wisdom, who we may appoint over this business. This was the time the apostles were, were now, now giving to you. And they said, it's not right for us to be waiting tables. They are the ones who are, who are, who are praying for people. We need to find men. We need to find people among us. We need to serve from a man who are known to be full of the Holy Spirit. That was one of the qualifications. To be full of wisdom. It is not everyone. We need to look for specific qualities, and these specific qualities are for specific positions. It is not just, oh no, this is what is available. The one who comes to send us everything, but they are also pretenders. It shouldn't be. Remember, it has all the mandate of bringing the kingdom of God. 
it is not influence so we can lead to our own people. It is influence so that we can lead people to Christ. If what I'm doing, if my leadership is not pointing you and I to Christ, then my leadership is in vain. It is not pointing. So we need to be wary what we are doing. We need to be wary how we are positioning ourselves. We need to be wary who we are bringing closer to this precious soul that the Lord has given to and you. So, in looking at specific qualities, I would like to draw us to 1 Timothy 3, 1 and 4. 1 Timothy 3, verse 1 and 2. And the Bible, the Bible reads, I'll, I'll, I'll use the NIV. And I think it's uh, the difference that you can think. Okay. So, first Timothy uh, 3 1 and 2 says, This is a true thing. If a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop must be blamed. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of Good behavior, given to hospitality and our peace. So, God is very specific about the things that require hospitality. He is not God of his day. He is very specific. And so, when he tells us to choose leader, he will tell you this hospitality. If you are an overseer, and this is an overseer, whatever you are doing, it is bring it out to our country. We have overseers in the children's ministry. If you are an overseer, these are the qualities that God is demanding for us. And we must we must grow these qualities. We must build on these characteristics. Because it's important for us. It's important for the ministry that you are going to have to So I, I'm bringing all this so that we understand that even as the ministry, it's important for us to be very, very careful in how we administer the word God has given us. And we must know that our leadership is actually very prominent and very paramount because the type of people that we are leading are ones who are poor. If you are leading an adult, an adult can be able to tell you, ah, Bumalanda, Babas, Bumalanda, brother, I will give you. But a child is like a child. A child absorbs. And you understand. To, to give the pure and adulterated gospel to a sponge who is going to absorb this sponge. Therefore, we can no afford to be wishy washy. We can't afford to be unprepared. We can't afford to just leave it to chance. We must be deliberate. We must be specific about the things we do and provide for the children. Amen. I hope I'm not alone. So I want us to look out for three uh, four things that we need to check in terms of leadership. What are the four C's of leadership? And these we'll find in John one and the so John 1 and verse 47, the Bible says, When Jesus came and came back to our approaches, instead of it, instead of it, he was doing it in an Israelite, it would be too distinct. That is a thing that you can read better than if you have another passage. But you don't know it. So how do you know about this? that he was speaking to was a different man and he knew exactly what he was talking about when he said he's not speaking to him. So what are these four C's of a leadership? The first one is character. The second one is confidence. The third one is chemistry. And the fourth is hope. Okay? So let's start then in 
Okay, which was coming to you that the, as the truth all of the sun. That if your character is wrong, the sun will not give you the light. Now, if even by God, even by God is standard, character is so important. How much more for the kingdom of God? How much more for the light? Who are called leaders in the kingdom of God? Character is a big thing. The inner fortitude. Character is simply the inner fortitude to do what is required of you without anyone looking, without anyone pushing. It's an inner ability for you to be able to do what you need to do. Capacity to meet the demands of your job and making sure that on the job you attain the reality that is said you are going to have. If today we are free, our let's do a business. At the end of the day, we are going to make so much. In 1,000, for this day, we are going to make so much. Yes? It's a violence. And we pick up the phone. We say, you know what? Yes, we invested. But it's in a few of the cash. No, I don't know. We're going to make it a violence. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. 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 No, because you have an obligation. Because if today you are not able to make a good name, then trust me, tomorrow that very precedent that you have set will come and prove you. A good name is better than nothing. So you cannot afford to, to kill your character. What do you know for? In your space, in your family, what do they know about a character? That is important. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Confidence. Confidence is being skilled. Okay? Having the skill. And this one, brethren, really, is easy because if you don't have the skills, the Bible even says God doesn't call the qualified, He qualifies the God. What you want, what you need to do, you need to be able to apply yourself. You must want to learn a particular skill. You must want to learn a particular competence. Competence to be learned. Okay? It's a technical and there's technical and there's behavioral competence. Behavioral competence and technical. Technical is the things you are an accountant, so you understand that an account, you are able to, to do the numbers in the course of what you are doing. how important it is for you and I to refine and develop our spiritual gifts. If we are children of God, if we are teachers of standards, we must always be looking to learn. What are the things that you are learning? What is that you are competent to do? So you can become skillful. So you can become, you can have a skill set that can only be used in you. That is only in you. It's the start of the way. Something new. Learn new skill. It's 
not about, I'm always saying, it's not about us going to sing those, those uh, Sunday school songs. No. What are you learning? How are you in, even the way you teach, there must be a difference. Then the children should be able to know when, when we come to this class, this is how we are going to learn. There must be a skill set that is refined and developed by you. We, want, we must want to be ready to rule and reign with Christ. Christ is not coming to rule and reign with competent people. He needs competence. He needs skill set. He needs refined spiritual gift handlers. Can you handle the spirit, the spiritual gifts? Are you able to fully competently say, I have exercised my spirit enough to handle the spiritual gifts? If there's any area you are lacking, the good news is you can learn. Competence is something which is learned. Hallelujah. All right, moving on to chemistry. The third component is chemistry. So chemistry, this has got to do with your value. Okay, the values. What are your values? The mission and vision that you have. Agreement with doctrine, agreement with theology. You need to have a team that agrees. How many of them that know what the PLG doctrine say? Can we confidently be able to tell someone say oh, that is not according to our doctrine? Have we read our constitutions for the churches? Have we, have we put ourselves in those places where we can be confident to be able to rightfully say, oh, not, that's not according to our doctrine, according to the other situations, or we think it's for the pastor. No, my brother, my sister, you are the pastor in your home. You are the pastor in your workplace. What are you going to tell the people around you when it comes to doctrine and theology? You should be able to rightfully find the scriptures which support the doctrine because chemistry is about how you can gel with someone. And for you to gel with someone, there must be areas of agreement. There must be areas where you agree. There's no way two can work together unless they agree, the Bible says. So what are you agreeing with? What have you empowered? What have you empowered yourself to? What is it that you have added yourself to? Do you understand the theology that you have believed? Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon and I must be ready. It's Jesus Christ that is coming soon. If tomorrow a Muslim came and challenged you, and yes, dear, that the author's witness came and challenged you, what would be your point to, to defend your faith? What will you say? Imagine that child you teach has got the author's witness time. And they come to you and they can all the way Come and challenge the way the Holy Spirit. What will you be able to reflect on? It's about you understanding your theology, understanding your doctrine, and then having the chemistry to agree with those that agree with you and work with those that agree with you. You will not agree with everyone. You will not agree with all religions. But we must know what we have added ourselves to. And once we know, we agree with it. If there are areas that we, that we defer or, or where we have doubt, we should be able to call on people who are higher than us, the ones who have gone ahead of us, and ask them these questions. Aside from they agree. The reason why we don't ask is because we don't even know. But Mishnah, so how do you ask if you do not know? Okay? And lastly, it's about the calling. Spiritual leadership requires a calling, okay? It requires to be called by God to do the work, okay? Called leaders have a conviction from God, and they work unto Him. Why is it important for us to have a calling? <laughs> a called person has a conviction, and one who has a conviction has a commitment. It is very hard for you to tell someone who is caught to say, I will save you. In fact, some people don't know that we know. Maybe let's think this. A good person does not wait to paint. A good person does not wait to ratification. A good person who the cause is about that which is gratified to them. Because their calling, their inner condition does not allow them to lay down the work. 
you have seen that people say, for the sake of the poor, I will lay down my life and I'm going to pursue. That is where you see a court person. If we had if we have called people who will not struggle with the people that you do who will not struggle, but it comes out of us having first of all the influence. The influence that started from the influence. It must take you guys to an influence in that life. I'm telling you, where people can see change, where people can see transformation, you and I will not need to call them. Is there any good work with me? No, they will come because they can see the impact. They will come because they can see the food. And everybody likes to be um, associated with success. Everyone wants to be associated with success. And so, my brother, my sister, today I want us to think about this. I want to leave you with this challenge of leadership. I want to leave you with the challenge of thinking, what type of leader are you? Who are you attracting in your leadership? Who are you attracting in the ministry? How many people have you connected with? What relationship are you building? Yeah. And then, what the Every man takes from What new thing have you learned? Everything, everything, yes, yes. because life is about learning, life is about lessons, life is about you and I taking responsibility because we realize that we are being given a life to be able to change the world. And how are we changing one by one using the pure and adulterated gospel? Okay, I see no hand. All right. So we are going to pray because leadership begins in the inside of each one of us. Second hand. We are going to pray for God to awaken the leader in each one of us. Yes, we are leaders. Yes, we have been working. And now let's entrust ourselves to God. To teach us, if we've already been doing leadership, let's entrust ourselves to God to teach us new ways of leadership, to teach us what it means to be servant leaders. We spoke of David being a servant leader, and I will encourage you to look at how David led, even amidst all the, all the trouble that he got with Saul. He continued to lead from a point of humility, from a point of servanthood. He continued to lead from a point of genuine love for his father. And that's where God wants each and every one of us. 
Thank you, my God. Thank you. 
spirit as we were learning as we were teaching one another about leadership i would like us to go to that place when you had a moment that you you thought whatever it is that has been shared spoke to your heart i would like us to pray in, 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 let's pray to that say it could it could be in the character the four um the four C's of leadership that is focused on character, competence, chemistry, and quality. Maybe you are saying in one of these, there's an area that needs to be developed. I want us to mm. just go, go before the Father and be honest. Yes. I need you to help me. Say, character, Father, I need the truth. I've been in agreement with the doctor. Everywhere I've not understood is. The theological part of what it is that we believe as as the to us and this father help me find the right material and be able to be in agreement so that as as I teach and teach it from the start what I am teaching to refine them and even develop them further in Jesus. Just go ahead and read it. Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God, we come against an assignment of darkness, O God, in Jesus' mighty name, O Lord. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name, in the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. We have a joy to be a prayer for the name of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. We have a joy to be a prayer for the name of God. With the King of the Glory, the King of the Kings of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord, Father, you are the King of the Kings, you are the Lord of the Lord, Father, you are the King of the Lord, Father, you are the
Indeed, because these children are like, as you say, like a what? A sponge. They, they grasp everything. So let us uh, be, uh, you know, be thankful to God that indeed we are teaching these students who don't know anything. It's us who are starting to teach these children that in the name, you know, as we are imparting these uh, uh, models of, you know, of uh, to fear the Lord, to walk with the Lord, to talk to God, to pray. To sing, to do everything concerning you know, the things of God is us. So let us be led to to do what God wants us to do, and Jehovah God will make us be glorified in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So let us close in a word of prayer. Sister, can you play? Can you play as we close? And also, don't forget to commit with Sister Dorothy. Dorothy, the hands of the Lord. Even the church, what she's doing there, let us commit the hands of the Lord. That is because we heard that it's a new church. Let us pray that God will shall give her that still, you know, in the you know the character of Christ, especially to demonstrate to you know, the community there that the people they shall see the light in her that will be drawn to the house of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we? Gracious Father, we thank you for today's meeting and for today's lesson in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we lift up and glorify your name. And we pray, Lord, in the Father, that in the mighty name of Jesus, may your light shine in our hearts. May we grasp with everything that we've been taught today as leaders. May we change our character, our attitudes, Lord, Heavenly Father, according to your will in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I also commit as the Dorothy, Lord, Heavenly Father, who is doing your work in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, Lord, Heavenly oh. Father, may the Holy Spirit, Lord, Heavenly Father, and your presence, Lord, Heavenly Father, guide our information. Name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, Heavenly Father, that may everything be done according to you, to your will of any God. We pray that yes. Lord, Heavenly Father, through her, the kingdom of God will grow, Lord, Heavenly Father, by the people oh, yes, that she is building in her new church in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Father, we pray, Lord, Heavenly Father, even for more new people to come in, more churches to open in the mighty name yes. of Jesus. Father, King of glory, we honor your name, we bless your name. Today, Lord, Heavenly Father, we've been enriched, Lord, Heavenly Father, with your bed yes. and with your, yes. with your guidance, Lord, Heavenly Father, to Pastor Sarah. We thank you, Lord, for sending her to speak to us, Lord, Heavenly Father. Yes, we Lord. thank you, Lord, Lord Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, through her, you, have, you are guiding us, you are giving us guidance. Let us go, oh, yes. Lord, by Lord, Heavenly Father, to impact knowledge in the young ones, Lord, Heavenly Father. Let us... 
teach them according to your will, Lord and Father, as you, Lord and Father. Yes. For you have said yes. that the children of the Heavenly Father belong to your kingdom with the mighty name oh, of yes. Jesus. Yeah. Father, yeah. Lord, yes. Father, Lord, Father, even next week's program for the teachers fellowship in your hands Father, as we close the year we pray that we close with you lord heaven father in fellowship oh, yes. in lord heaven father in unity as one big family mm-hmm. may you alone mm-hmm. father god, glory go before us father jehovah yes. god we pray in the mighty of jesus lord heavenly father that you open doors of finances that people oh, are yes. able to oh, meet yes. lord heavenly father are able to yes. come up to be able oh, yes. to father to attend this important fellowship. Father, we yes, thank you for everything that you've done for us and what you are able to do for us. It is indeed mm. in the mighty of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen and amen. Yes.